Hey y'all, welcome, welcome. It's Mo here. Cezanne just released some more beautiful pieces for the fall, and I wanted to give you some more options of patterns that you can use to recreate these looks. So let's get into it. Starting off with the Manon dress. Warmth and style go hand in hand with this first piece. The Manon dress is a maxi length, long sleeve shift sweater dress with a slightly raised neckline. It's cozy and comfortable, loose fitting. And for fabrics, you can use a rib knit or a cable sweater knit. What sets this dress apart is the button detail at the shoulder. This easy breezy dress, you can wear it loose fitting as shown, or if you wanna take it up a notch, you can belt the waist and blue sawn it out. This can be styled with boots, clogs, or loafers, whatever your style is. This effortless silhouette will easily become your go-to fashion staple this season. For the pattern, you can use New Look 6683. The fabric I'll be using to recreate this dress is a marled rib knit fabric from Joann's. It comes in two colors, olive green and tan. It's 70% polyester, 30% rayon, and the right and the wrong sides are both equally beautiful. So if you want thinner rib or thick rib, this fabric's got you covered. Next up is the Trudy Jumper, which is a long sleeve raglan sweater with a button placket across one of the shoulders. I recommend Butterick 6857 and 6859 to recreate this sweater. The first one for the placket detail that you can borrow and the second for the raglan detail. Your primary pattern will be the 6859, and again, you're just borrowing that placket element from 6857 or that pattern hack to get that exact dupe of the sweater. And for future projects, both patterns are actually great additions to a fall winter wardrobe. For fabrics, mohair, wool, rib, or sweater knits are perfect options. Moving on to the Simon Jumper, it's a long sleeve rib knit sweater slightly lighter weight with a button placket detail at the bottom of the sleeve. To recreate this one, you'll need McCall's 7983 to get that snug fit. Now, I know this is a bodysuit pattern, but it can be easily hacked to get the top. Plus, the fit is on par with the Simon Jumper. And if you picked up Butterick 6857, you'll have your placket detail for the sleeves at the bottom. Next up is the Tobias jumper and the Joey trousers. The Tobias jumper is a long sleeve half zip pullover with a high neckline and Joey is an elasticated pant with pockets. You can get the look of Tobias with the Vicky Sews Lindsay hoodie. And for the pants, Simplicity 9272. For the fabrics, you can use Merino wool Ponty knit, model, or sweatshirt fleece. For all you crochet enthusiasts out there, we have the Andina cardigan. I found a crochet pattern that's an exact dupe. It's going to be the Pompeii cardigan by For the Frills. And I'll put the link for that pattern in the description below. And just so you guys know, that is a free pattern. If you're seeing something that tickles your creative fancy, then I have a question for you. Which piece in today's lineup would you like to recreate the most? And tell me why. For lovely frocks, we have the Bohemia dress and the Hamilda dress. The Bohemia is a short, voluminous dress with puff sleeves and cuffs. And you can get the look with McCall's 8312. And Hamilda is a shirt dress with two tiers, long sleeve as well, and cuffs. Full button detail down the front and an umpire waist tier. Now for this dress, you can combine McCall's 8285 and 7351. If you'd like a dress with more fluid drape, you can use the viscose rayon blend or silk. And for more structure, you can use the cotton shirting. This next outfit features classic tailoring that's a nod to the 90s. The Elroy jacket, the Giacomo trousers, and the Mac shirt. The Elroy jacket is a V neckline vest with welt pockets and a two button placket at the back and a middle button fastening. And the Giacomo trousers 
are full length straight leg trousers with a zip and front button closure, pleats at the front, and slanted pockets at the side. The patterns you can use for this one are Butter at 6901 and 6902 for Giacomo and Elroy. For the Mac shirt, you can use Butterick 6946 or 6947. But if you already have a classic button down shirt in your stash, that's okay too. For the fabrics on the jacket and pants, you'll want to use a poly wool blend, wool suiting, or wool crepe. And for the shirt, a crisp cotton shirting. So Rochelle actually did a sew along for this pattern. And I'll leave a link for that video in the description below. These next two pieces are sure to elevate your casual style. So we have the Betty cardigan, which is a crop long sleeve jacket or shacket with chest pockets. And for this one, you can use McCall's 8011. Now you don't have to crop the jacket if you don't want to. And for the pockets, they are patch pockets with flaps. So you may have to make some slight modifications on those. For fabric, you can use a merino wool or a ponty knit. For the lay crop jeans, you can use No Me 2052. On this pattern, you will be omitting the patches from the front and the back, but the silhouette is spot on perfect for these jeans. And for your fabrics, of course, you can use denim or even corduroy for a cozy feel. By the way, if you're finding this video inspiring and informative, then please show it some love by giving it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with a couple of creative friends. Last but not least for outerwear, we have the Joe coat and the James coat. These two coats I want to highlight, they are extremely similar. Both are long coats featuring a shawl collar, but the difference is the Joe coat has two front patch pockets and a concealed press stud fastening at the center front. Both are lined. The James coat has a double button front and a seam line at the waist with two pockets inlaid in the waistband. Now for both of these coats, you can use a wool poly blend or wool coating. I'm sketching out the James coat because it's my favorite of the two. And for the pattern, you can use Vogue 1663. As the leaves change and the temperature drops, this stunning lineup will keep you cozy, warm, and stylish. What makes Cezanne so special is that they use a variety of textures, patterns, and color in each of their collections. And what you'll notice is they do use a lot of unconventional colors and prints in a given season. So for this fall collection, they used a lot of bright florals, a lot of pastel colors, colors that you normally don't tend to see in the fall. And for designers that capture our attention and us being home sewers, that's the beauty of being able to flex your creativity and make pieces in the color and prints and fabrics that we love and not stick to a hard, fast trend. The next episode in this series is just a hop, skip, and a stitch away. So if you missed the first one, don't worry. You can catch up and watch it here. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, y'all, keep sketching, keep sewing, and keep the momentum going. Take care.